Here's a sender. If you really want the lowest latency, there's no alternative to just starting sending at line rate without even a connection setup handshake. Much of the time this will work fine if the network utilization isn't all that high. So what's going to go wrong if we just do that? Modern data center networks are typically some variant of a cross topology. It's really hard to see what's going on in the core of this. So let's reorganize it a bit. And let's make it transparent so we can see what's going on inside. There we go. That's better. Here's a flow that started at line rate. In principle, at least, the clause topology has enough capacity for everyone to send to someone else at line rate. So the problem isn't lack of capacity. The problem is how we route flows. If you just do per flow ECMP, you'll get flow collisions, lots of packet loss, and really poor performance. So what can you do? If every sender sprays packets equally across all paths to the destination, you don't get flow collisions, and you can use the full capacity of the network core. Downside, you get a ton of reordering, which makes life hard for transport protocols. The other problem you get is if flows are all sending to the same place. Incas can still cause big problems. Lots of loss happening there. Now, all these little sparks flying around may look pretty, but they don't really capture what's actually happening. The packet traversing a data center network looks more like this. If there's no queuing, serialization dominates the latency. In fact, a small control packet like an ACK can traverse the whole network in the time it takes a data packet to traverse a link. We'll use this property in a moment. What should a switch do when an outgoing link's overloaded? The default is to drop packets. Loss is bad, but not for the reason most people think. Read transmission is cheap, but loss leads to uncertainty, and this causes delay. ECMP is a little better. It doesn't really solve the in-caps problem, though, unless you have very large buffers, which also leads to delay. At the other end of the spectrum, we've lost this Ethernet. Unfortunately, this builds large queues too, and PFC can delay other unrelated flows. What we wanted some middle ground, and the cut payload paper from Tsinghua University gave us an idea. When a queue fills, trim off the payload and forward just the header. This gives the network lossless for metadata, though not for data. So here's an NDP switch. To keep latency low, we run really short queues. Eight data, eight data packets is enough. When the data queue overflows, we trim off the payload. We don't just forward the header though and put it in a priority queue. This allows the receiver to find out as soon as possible that the packet didn't make it. We also priority forward ACKs, NACs, and other data packets. And this lets us do really fast retransmissions. OK, let's see this in action. We'll have a whole load of senders all send one packet to the destination. We'll get an incast at the last top of rack switch. Now watch the red packet. It gets trimmed, priority forwarded, knacked, and resent really quickly. So quickly, in fact, the rise before the preceding queues even had a chance to drain. That's a bit quick. Let's see it all again. Queue begins to build. Here comes red. Okay, it's going to slow motion. Here comes the data packet being serialized across the link. The yellow pack is going to get there first. And the red one is trimmed and the header goes to the front of the queue. It's got to wait for the preceding packet to be forwarded. Now it's forwarded and the NAT goes back across the network. And here comes the retransmission. And the retransmission gets there at exactly the time it would have got there if it hadn't been trimmed in the first place. Here's the NDP receiver and an incast has just started. For every incoming data packet or header, we add a pull packet to the pull queue. When the incoming link's overloaded, lots of headers arrive, 
the pull queue starts to build. Here we can see pull packets are starting to build up in the queue. OK, let's pause. The key thing is that we only send pulls based on, based on the rate we want data packets to actually arrive. This gives the receiver the ability to control its incoming traffic. So after the first round trip time, traffic arrives at line rate. If the receiver wants, it can also prioritise traffic from one sender over others, even during an in-cast. See, one packet goes out, one, one pull goes out, one packet comes back, pull goes out, packet comes back. OK, here we are back at the sender. It only sends one window of data at line rate, and then it stops. From then on, pull packets from the receiver clock out either retransmissions or new data packets. Let's see it all in action. We've got three senders here, and send a whole window of data at line rate to the receiver. That small key will fill and packets are going to get trimmed. After the first round trip time though, the aggregate rate from the three senders exactly matches the link rate. No more trimming is going to be needed. You can see here, the aggregate rate of packets coming in is the same as the rate of the packets going out. So no more trimming is needed. 